Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 618. That's 618 of the Agostino Zynga show coming at you live and direct from an undisclosed location somewhere in London. I hope you are doing well wherever this podcast may be finding you. I hope you are doing well. Great, amazing, good to hear. How am I? You know, doing the best I can with the time I have available. I've actually been doing an interesting thing this week. This is the first week in a very long time where I've done zero exercise. And when I mean zero, I mean zero. I've not lifted a single dumbbell, not swung a single kettlebell, not run, not pushed a bar, not deadlift, not squatted. I've done absolutely zero. And this is coming off the back of a very extensive sober October where I probably started from about middle September all the way up until the end of October. No breaks, no cheating, no nothing. Did it all the way through, abstained from everything and went to the gym basically every day for the exception of a Sunday and my body just probably needed a break. And I did it without even thinking also. I think that's when, you know, you hear sometimes um, athletes and professional bodybuilders or you know, fitness influencers say, listen to your body, listen to your body. It can sometimes feel a little bit cliche and a little bit insulting. But sometimes if you actually work out hard enough and you actually put your body through the ringer and you actually push yourself to your limits, your body does give you the answers that you need without you even sometimes asking the questions. Sometimes you wake up, you're like, you know what, I can't be bothered today. And it's not one of those days where you can't be bothered and you should just power through it. No, your body doesn't let you even leave the house. That's how hard it is. So I feel like this week that I've been on um, abstaining and kind of taking myself away from working out and just letting my body heal and rest, it's going to do me a world of good. I actually woke up the other day with some tightness in the bottom of my back as well, which was pretty gnarly because it felt like my back was seizing up. But, you know, I had to kind of drop on the foam roller and get that all cranked out. But it's been a pretty gnarly feeling. I'm not going to lie because it's been a very long time since I've not done any exercise ever. I always do something during a week whether it's a couple of runs whether it's a couple of wads in the gym I always do something so to not do anything for more than seven days has been pretty gnarly because I think I didn't do nothing on like a Sunday so it's going to be like eight days coming up until the Monday but then of course on Monday I'm back on the wagon and getting back into it so it should be funny and just to see where I go because it's always hilarious whenever you do go out to the gym after a very very prolonged period of time when you're out of it and you have to kind of pick up a weight or something you're like damn man the weight I was like throwing around here and it was super super easy is now suddenly become very very difficult to lift over my head so that's going to be quite fun to see that happening in real time so i'm really really looking forward to it but i'm just encouraging you if you are somebody who does work out as much as i do i tend to do like five days a week minimum and if you are somebody that does that i do recommend taking some periods of breaks some periods of rest just to let your body heal and get back into it the worst thing you do especially the older you get is try to power through things and try to work around injuries it sometimes makes things worse i've I know it's happened to me before where I basically end up in a position where I kind of felt like I broke my back but I ended up just spraining a muscle and I had to call some emergency masseuse to come to my house and basically break me back into shape and that wasn't fun in the slightest so I don't recommend it one bit whatsoever but that came because I didn't listen to my body I wasn't necessarily taking the right precautions I wasn't I wasn't you know uh, I wasn't putting myself in the right positions I wasn't doing all the things I needed to do before lifting the weight in terms of my breathing in terms of my tensing all these things these little you know cues that you hear about keeping your back flat about breathing in exhaling when you press out or push whatever it may be all these things actually help in terms of preventing injuries but the maximum thing is to know when to kind of take your foot off the pedal and I've taken my foot off the pedal all week and I'm actually feeling way more refreshed than I would have if I just continued powering through so I'm actually happy with it and I can't wait to see how things evolve and go forward in the next few weeks or so why don't we start the show by highlighting some interesting news that i saw on hypebeast regarding emily oberg sporty and rich they have a collaboration with adidas originals of all things um which to me is a bit surprising because i never really saw sporty and rich as an expansive enough brand to have a full collaboration with because everything just felt kind of merchy 
Like you sold some t-shirts, you saw some sweats that were printed on blanks and that was basically it. And the funny thing about it for me was that whenever you saw a lookbook or an editorial of Sporty and Rich, it always looked very tastefully done. It looked very Tumblr-esque, very on brand. It kind of reminded me of stuff that you'd see featured on those pages that kind of looked like they're promoting um, eating disorders, right? I know they're not, but there's these weird pages on Twitter and Instagram that exist where it looks like they're promoting girls who have eating disorders, but they're also promoting girls who go to uni but don't study. The ones that are like, oh, uni, uni, hall, uni fit. And it's like this, you know, I don't know. It's like a Celine tote bag. It's like a Laura Piana flipping overcoat. It's like Adidas Sambas. It's like, you know, uh, Adidas AirPod Maxes, a phone, a flipping notebook with nothing written in it but you know horoscope notes and stuff absolutely horrendous things and that would all you'd see and that's the kind of aesthetic you thought what i remember seeing from sporty and rich editorials but the funny thing that always made me laugh about them was that in their editorials there'd always be something like this in the opening image as you can see on hype beats where there's a lady in this cool little pose wearing some cool sport and rich pants that have been made with adidas and some adidas shoes and then she's got this cable knit jumper on that looks nice and these like boxer short things underneath that looks pretty cool too right uh kind of like boyfriend boxer short type vibe you know boyfriend jeans boyfriend hoodie boyfriend this like it's just it's just annoying it, it's like the it's like the weird excuse that skinny girls need to wear baggy clothes because they don't like wearing baggy clothes. So it's better to say it's a boyfriend thing because it me also it's like a weird humble brag. Like I have a boyfriend, you know, that's why I got this thing. I don't know. It's very, it's very interesting, very weird. But regardless, whenever you see these editorials, you see this cool little cable knit jumper, right? You see this cool watch that that lady's wearing and maybe some earrings. And the funny thing is when it was sporty and rich stuff, none of this stuff would be sporty and rich. So it all be a vibe this will just be vibes like models own but then this stuff is the what is what they do in terms of a brand it's very interesting you don't really see many other brands do that you don't see many brands sell an image but then promote or show you know lookbook stuff that they don't make um, maybe some shoes you might see some air force ones you might see some glasses maybe but you don't see like pieces of clothing that you can't buy because it's just part of the look for the lookbook. But then the actual thing that they're selling is just an overpriced t-shirt with a crappy name. You can't get anything worse in terms of a name than sporty and rich. Sorry. It's in the same sort of bracket as flipping daily paper or something, right? It's just a name that means something, but means absolutely nothing at the same point. And it's also a name that I feel like hasn't really aged well. You know what I mean? It kind of maybe looked good back in the day in tumblr era blogger era whatnot early days of instagram but nowadays to call yourself sporty and rich to have sporty and rich emblazoned on your pants on your t-shirt and walk down the street with pride and hold your head up high and walk into your flipping spin class and feel like you're doing something walking into flipping ace hotel and feeling like you're doing something walking into flipping chateau marmon and thinking you're doing something walking into flipping all these crazy places and thinking you're doing something with sporty and rich on is legitimately the height the height of corniness and lameness but as just a as just an idea as a piece of execution as a project it's pretty interesting to see because i don't think it's a label or a fashion company in the slightest it's for me just a vibe thing um it, it maybe is an incubator of ideas it maybe is a platform it might be a quote-unquote collective of one person who everyone wants to maybe look like or something or the guys want to fuck cool fair but in terms of being a fully fledged brand come on if this is a brand, then what is flipping Anti-Social Social Club? That must be, if Sporty and Rich is a, Sporty Rich is a brand, then Anti-Social Social Club must be fucking Imperial Armani, right? They must be putting out 100,000 looks if this is a fucking brand. It makes absolutely no sense. But the byline is that LA-based label, um, fashion, vintage inspired Samba OG and Stan Smith and Campus A offerings alongside matching tracksuits. So the cable knit jumper is not part of Sporty and Rich, but the tracksuit is, which is funny. And why even feature the cable knit jumper? It looks good in the picture long get me wrong but it's such a false advertisement for what they're pushing out there to be honest um the next slide it features again look at this false advertisement honestly they do this for ages uh, is, is even that bra top included in it i bet it's not the bra top this whole look looks incredibly sick and really cool right it obviously something that you know not the lizards amongst us can probably get away with wearing and making look good but still it's a flipping cool look i get it it's nice but you've got this amazing camel um colored overcoat looks like it's double breasted with some nice um buttons there 
and you got these great track pants actually that look very needle needleless x needle needles esque sorry you got this great bra and panty set maybe it's a short set maybe it's a gym set i'm not really too sure with this great pearl earrings and the model is incredibly attractive also with the hair down it looks flipping banging right it's set on the backdrop of some you know what is this is this a roman bathhouse somewhere is this the back of some shisha place who knows but it's a really good look and an outfit but the whole thing that sets it off is that overcoat that camel brown overcoat sets the whole entire look off and you can't get it that's not sporty and rich i don't care what anyone says that this is not something they make they may have made the short they may have made the pants and the bra top and the and the under pants wherever they are but that overcoat and those pearl necklace is not part of sporty and rich which is why i'm saying they do a lot of false advertising and a lot of just like you know um vibes styling when it comes to the things that they put out there which is very interesting i remember there was a really old editorial that i remember seeing in id back in the day that was super cool because if I remember it correctly, whoever the ID editorial fashion director was at the time, they did this photo shoot where they essentially took loads of vintage items and basically repurposed it, like re-engineered them. So I think they took a pair of track pants that were meant to be really wide and made them really skinny and then put them on the pair, matched them up with a pair of Nike Air Max 95s, I remember. And I remember looking at that look and thinking, oh, that's pretty sick. And then matched that look with like a really expensive and new, at the time, undercover coat. So that was the first time I saw in a, in a magazine vintage stuff being styled with the brand right with something that's coming out in the shop but then you can imagine undercover might be a little bit more open to having their stuff styled with stuff you can get in rocket than maybe a dulce cabana but that makes sense but it's not something you see common you you don't see too often sorry in editorials or in lookbooks at all so for a brand itself maybe editorials is one thing but for a brand lookbook to have items on a lookbook that you don't make yourself it's just really bizarre but anyway we continue there's another one here there's a pair of jeans in this lookbook here <laughs> I mean, I that's like, are they, do they make these jeans i don't i doubt it they look like they fit really well um they suit the model amazing again they're tucking the t- t-shirt into those underpant white things again which is interesting it's a nice t-shirt there in that like kelly green with the tray what's it how do you call it the tri the tri fell logo having the one with the three leaves on it you know what i'm talking about and some white sambas in there obviously the sambas are clearly something that adidas are trying to push i guess for next season maybe it seems like um the white sambas might be or the sambas in general could be the new Reebok Classic, especially if you live in a metropolitan hipstery area, you'll know the damage that Reebok Classics and guys who flipping rolled their own cigarettes does or are doing to the flipping industry and the scene in general. So for the guys out there and the girls who are probably stomping around the London streets in double double sold Dr. Martins or banged up white Air Force Ones or what's people wearing at the moment? I see people wearing like Vejas, those vegan shoes that are completely horrendous. The only good ones that they ever make are the Rick Owens collaborations. And what else are people wearing? Oh, and Converse's, right? People are wearing a lot of Converse's at like the 70s and whatnot. So cool. It looks like the next hype, kind of trendy, cool shoe for all the hipsters who rolled up their own cigarettes and like to, you know, buy their flipping lamb sheases from really dodgy kebab places in the depths of Northwest London will be Sambas. Sambas are the next one. But you could, you could really find, you know, <laughs> to ever, I don't think you're ever going to find me ever wearing a pair of sporty and rich sambas number one sambas don't suit my feet anyway because i've got gigantic elephant feet so it's going to be hard to make sambas work for my feet but if you think i'm going to go out there and buy sambas that say sporty and rich on the side of them you have another thing coming you might also have a pair of sambas that say yrn young rich nation or something right or young rich niggas whatever that flipping moniker for amigos was called right rip takeoff but imagine wearing something that says sporty and rich on the side of your shoe that is the height of corniness and lame um another good shoot here look now again with the pearl necklace that looks amazing it looks like it's kind of pinching a little bit of her neck there but regardless the, the little half quarter zip zip fridge top looks really nice but just imagine walking around with something that says that on the front of your top sporty and rich and i'm sure the rich is like rich in spirit rich in friends this doesn't always mean money it's like yeah look i didn't believe it when pharrell said it right um wealth is in the mind and not in the pocket because that guy is very wealthy and he doesn't give his money away to anybody right is still fucking asking for her masters so that whole rich in spirit thing you can miss me with that one especially in the global recession i need actual cold hard cash i'm sorry and most of us don't look like her so we can't be spoiling rich anyway even if we tried 
Um, you've got some campuses here in a, in, a, in, a, in a sort of burgundy color. The good thing I think about it is, if I remember correctly, again, I don't really know too much about Emily Oberg as a person, but if I remember correctly, she is a legit sneakerhead. Like, not like one of these girls nowadays who just, you know, it feels like nowadays, especially on social, you know, everyone's trying to find an angle. If you're a DJ, you know, you take your top off, you show your tattoos and stuff and you gyrate behind the decks. If you're a girl and you're mildly hot, you, you get really into sports and you follow a football team, you become like a Chelsea fan. And maybe nowadays also there's this idea that, you know, some girls are pretending they're into skateboarding or wearing sneakers. But if I remember correctly, Emily Oberg is actually a legitimate sneakerhead. Like she actually used to buy sneakers back in the day when I was buying them and be on forums and whatnot. Because I remember people kind of speaking about her and stuff. And she was at the talk of the town at one point because she was the only mildly attractive girl that existed on the scene. Isn't it? So she got a lot of outsized kind of attention at one point. And maybe she's just some dumb stuff. I'm not really too sure. But I didn't pay much attention. But... This makes sense that she was a sneakerhead because think of them, even though I would never wear anything that's a sporty original side of them, in terms of the models that she's picked, in terms of the colorways that she's done, bravo. You've got here a campus that's essentially in a plush burgundy sort of colorway with a, you know, kind of classic off, off white or white outsole, white stripes, white heel tab, and the burgundy laces, just done classic like two color combos nothing else no other bells and whistles no flipping power lining no zips on the side no removable or flipping you know um changeable flipping tongue or anything just classic what you'd kind of expect from a campus or maybe a campus that doesn't really necessarily out at the moment especially the ones that have been retro that may be a little bit more extravagant but just a classic campus what you'd expect from it and she absolutely smashed these so these look great but again the jeans really make the look in it that those jeans the wash had they been repaired here on the knee this you know that maybe uh, maybe they've been re-engineered and put back together who knows but the jeans are absolutely amazing right and they look like they might be levi's maybe yellow tabby of levi's too but these aren't part of flipping sporty and rich the t-shirt is and the flipping trainers, but the jeans aren't. Like, it's proper false advertising, in my opinion. The nice track top there in the Kelly green. And again, you've got this bra top also that I don't think is part of the collection. Again, I don't, I'm not too sure if this is going to be suiting ladies with more buxom chesters. But regardless, this Stan Smith looks interesting. I've never been really been a big fan of Stan Smiths in general. They just, again, they don't suit my feet. I've got too, my feet are too wide and too big to make Stan Smiths work. But... If you're somebody who likes wearing these type of shoes, I don't think you'd be hard pressed to not like these. You've got the little logo on the side, all white with the burgundy heel tie, burgundy logo. And again, sport here, rich on the side. You can go and chuck those off the side of a bridge for all I care, never, never wearing them. The, the Sambas, they are what they are. There's a little gold pearl thing on the side you're all going to wear it again no necklace involved in the actual collections that's a bit weird the tongue has been shortened i'm not really a fan of that either uh, i prefer the tongue to be the classic sort of samba tongue that kind of flips down you either you either go long or you go home when it comes to sambas the campus looks pretty interesting again i'm not too sure what the sculpt just have to do with the design and what they have to do with the inspiration about the brand but they send the message anyway that it's all about exuberance, it's all about luxury, it's all about being sporty and rich, and it's all about putting cable knit jumpers and jeans and all that stuff and white pants into a lookbook that you're never going to sell. So <laughs> I guess it is what it is. Um, when is it due to come out? It's due to come out on November 22nd, so if you want to buy a pair of sporty and rich um, ADAS originals, then make sure you check them out on November 22nd. I'm not sure if it's going to be only women's or men's also, but you know, you have to be a real special specimen as a dude to go out and wear that stuff if you want it. But hey, who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Moving on from that, I want to quickly touch upon this video that's been going viral over the last couple of days it feels like because kanye popped out of nowhere and decided to press the button that he does all the time in terms of outraging people he was accosted by some paparazzi i guess he was maybe out on date night i'm not too sure what he was doing but he gave a little two minute interview where he essentially said no one can control him 
and I thought it was pretty interesting because we haven't heard anything from Kanye in a while but since all the backlash with Kyrie has been going on he's probably been watching it um, you know from afar and seeing how quickly people change their tune in terms of how Kyrie one week was being anti-semitic and then suddenly the next week um, the punishment didn't fit the crime and then people may be saying Kanye had a point so it was kind of high time that he kind of came out of hiding and decided to speak and let people know that he can't be controlled that these eyes are not for controlling that he's still on smoke and that it's up so here let's hear Kanye say what he has to say here it's scary they can't control you they can't they, they, they try to suppress you but that's how they try to categorize they you. can't control me you get what I'm saying they can control Shaq they can control Charles Barkley they can control LeBron James Look how he's looking. Look how sassy Kanye's looking. He's giving the paparazzi or he's giving us the look that young Miami probably gave Diddy when he was giving all those other girls presents and not paying her much attention. <laughs> right? Look at him. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. No, not you, man. But they can't control me. You not see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. And big up that paparazzi as well, egging him on, knowing how to press his button, knowing how to goad him into a reaction. Good job. It's up. Not you. You know what I'm saying? And just for Minister Farrakhan, I love you, but the way you read that, I took that as a slight. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm taking no disrespect from nobody, so let's get on the phone and let's talk that out. I don't care who you are. Ooh. I ain't taking no slights from nobody, right? I ain't taking no slights from nobody. It's God. That's the only person that I serve. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. Me too. Huh? You understand? Yeah. Appreciate Michael you. Jordan, what about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby, his son, <laughs> right? Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. They want to monetize and traumatize. And God loved me. You understand? They, they hit me. Gap, Adidas, all that away. Still, Forbes, who hate me, right, had to write net worth 400 million. Jesus is king. God loved me. That's more important than thinking in life. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, and this truth is going to be heard. Y'all can't send none of y'all meat meals, y'all puffies, y'all little boozy, none of these names, none of these people. To have to listen to y'all because they're dealing they have legal i never killed nobody right i'm the pussy that never killed nobody right but that means i could say whatever i want yo that's wild him kind of suggesting in a roundabout way that all those guys that he mentions only say the things that they say about him and criticize him and push back at the stuff that he says or maybe fall in line and you know be a company man i don't know if it have been company men too but regardless the thing the people he feels like are being coons or being controlled they're only being controlled because they have crimes that they've committed that they don't want people to know about essentially they might have murdered people like what are you talking about but all of that is mute in it because clearly my man's just saying anything just to get a reaction but the truth remains or the fact remains we still haven't heard from the guy as to why he wasn't invited to Virgil Abloh's private funeral R.I.P. to the great why he wasn't allowed to speak at Virgil Abloh's public funeral R.I.P. to the great we still haven't heard that and that's one of the things I think was the great kind of silver lining and golden nugget to come from this whole drama was i think the realization on mass i've i've already realized it because i'm an adult but i think for some people who are still maybe a bit naive it was good to maybe realize and kind of have the wall kind of pulled off from your eyes in terms of realizing that kanye is just a dude He's going through whatever he's going through, whether it's mental health, whether it's trauma, who knows, whether it's just him being who he is. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and kind of pretend to know what's going on in his head or how he's suffering or not suffering. But one thing that's been proven or one thing that's been revealed during this time is that the guy is fallible. Right? The guy is definitely a flawed human. He definitely has his errors. He definitely has his mistakes. And he's just like you and I. There's nothing that separates him between us in terms of maybe a couple of millions or whatnot. Right? That's all it is. But in general, he is basically like you and I, and he has his faults. And I guess that's been a great thing to kind of witness in real time. The kind of um, the altar or the pulpit that he stood on at one point suddenly coming crumbling down around him and him trying to cope and 
make it make sense so you have to big up Tremaine Emery for basically exposing that and highlighting the fact that you know it wasn't all it wasn't all roses he wasn't always Virgil's guy he wasn't always supporting his friends he was talking bad about about people behind their backs and just being a horrible horrible colleague a horrible mentor horrible friend even on flipping Virgil Abloh's deathbed and we still haven't heard from Kanye to this day as to why he wasn't exactly allowed to speak at Virgil Abloh's private funeral or public funeral which is pretty crazy right I think no I think personally yeah I think he wasn't allowed to was he even did he even go to the private one or is that the fact no he didn't it was i think Ter tremaine alleged he wasn't invited to the private one and he couldn't speak at the public one which is brutal because a private one was with actual close friends which we had no idea even went on that's why it was bloody private and the public one was the one that took place in that museum i'm pretty sure where there was that clip that went viral that people were flipping sharing which was horrible of, of tyler crying and giving a speech at the museum in virgil's honor and whatnot but he wasn't allowed to speak at that either. So we don't know. But obviously we can read between the lines and clearly they weren't on good terms to the point where even his family didn't want him to speak there even after his death because usually people kind of mend and sort of let bygones be cut bygones after death because, you know, you quickly realise that you know, stuff is never that serious and if you were, there was a real bond there then it's better to kind of spend the time that you have on this planet being cool and making things right but even on that guy's deathbed they still weren't happy to have him take any kind of meaningful part in the funeral whatsoever which clearly i think is a sign that the guy is you know he's not the guy that we kind of all fell in love with back in the day it just is what it is we have to kind of accept or move on from what he is now at the moment that's basically it where we're at but i think a lot of people are still struggling with coming to grips with that sort of stuff because i think they still have this image of kanye being the guy that they kind of fell in love with back in the day but that guy has gone that guy is dead that guy is finished it's over you have to move on then I got news here I went to talk about quickly regarding my guy Matthew Williams at Givenchy and I'm happy to see because there was a I felt concentrated effort or concerted effort it felt like to get him the F out of here at Givenchy I don't know why exactly because he comes across as a pretty nice dude he's somebody that from uh, I've seen online and from own experience seems to be very personable he replies to flipping DMs and um, whether it's a double tap whether it's a little comment he seems to be somebody that's very plugged in with youth culture he actively takes part in social media and all that good stuff and just generally seems to be a good egg in terms of how he kind of carries himself in the flipping cutthroat backstabby way a backstabby industry of fashion in general and considering he's somebody that comes from the the school or the collective of Virgil's kind of extended friends and somebody who has no formal training and kind of came into it via kind of street wear but not really mostly obviously having the experience of working um, with Lady Gaga and doing a lot of her kind of costume design and whatnot and then doing some fashion bits here and there and consulting with Yeezy and obviously doing the stuff that he was doing with um, the Bintrill stuff but he essentially came into it and got thrown into the deep end he was always somebody that had really good style really good taste obviously with stuff that he's doing with the leaks but not somebody you would ever say you could envision envision somebody being a head of a house so when he got the job at Givenchy I was totally surprised I'm not gonna lie but I always thought he could also do it pretty well because he just seemed like somebody who was learning and kind of building on his repertoire of skills in real time very quickly you look at the early designs of Elix and you look at the stuff that they're producing now and it's really really improved exponentially so I could only imagine the stuff that he's learned from that and he's trying to carry it over onto Givenchy and obviously during fashion week for whatever reason maybe because the collections weren't necessary to people's tastes and you have to i know what it is because you have to you have to be honest paris fashion week is the sort of oscars when it comes to fashion week right it's the kind of it's the world cup it's the champions league it's the best 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 of the best so sometimes even if you're mediocre you look really really or if you're average you look really bad compared to everybody else because everybody else's levels are so high so it's hard to kind of compete but i like the fact that he's competing i love the fact that he's trying to um carve his own little niche out there with Givenchy, especially considering how dead the brand was for a long time um you know the, the you know the best period of Givenchy was definitely during ricardo tishi's time but he's doing his best um he's trying new ideas he's clearly got something going on there he's got a hold of some element of youth culture he's made Givenchy covetable and desirable desirable again i've never actually felt or seen any of the stuff in real life but from what i can what i can tell and from what i've read online about people buying stuff and you know pick pickups they've been posting on reddit and whatnot people are very impressed um with the detail and the quality of the garment so clearly he's doing something right 
and it felt like the effort to get him out of there wasn't necessarily grounded in anything apart from just people being bored of what he's making and wanting to see their favorite in the job i didn't necessarily think he deserved being kicked out because he's doing a bad job it's just because people just didn't like what they saw they weren't necessarily fans of streetwear which to me especially in paris fashion week setting feels always like a dog whistle whenever they're like oh we don't want streetwear we want to return to tailoring it always feels like a dog whistle to get the blacks and the browns and the freaks and the weirdos out of here so they can have the conventional standard boring fashion educated people you know put in runway put in flipping you know themes and mood boards down the flipping runway and trying to sell that in stores so it doesn't work but obviously it appears all the flipping purists and whatnot but there is some good news it looks like Givenchy is going from shrimp to shrimp because they've announced his collaboration with Bistre another one who you would say would has close connections with Virgil and maybe there's somebody that maybe Virgil kind of introduced Matthew Williams to so his legacy lives on which is great to see and it's a whole entire collaboration with jeans t-shirts uh, varsity jackets backpacks it looks like and even some footwear absolutely nuts so it's a article quickly we'll read here goes to you of Hypebeast it's a since Matthew Williams joined Givenchy as creative director the designers came cadence has consisted of offering a contemporary take on tailoring while also staying true to the elevating street focus silhouettes in furthering the latter Givenchy has now linked up with Brick Owens and Dita Graham's label Bistro for a hybridized streetwear set for the spring 2023 season the collection the collaboration explores the connection between contemporary art and fashion through sensory graphic designs and signature casual silhouettes collection pieces like the crew neck varsity jacket crew neck sweatshirts double hooded double headed hoodies um, slightly oversized polo shirts and distressed denim are complete with multicolored patches and graphic designs digging into Bistro's Atlanta roots the graphics reinvent the Georgia Pacific logo alongside a range of co-branded decals elsewhere in the collection of accessories and a top footwear like the moon cutout shoulder bag multicolored g-toe backpacks customized denim caps and shark lock boots which look fucking brilliant, right? Imagine taking a shark boot and making it fucking denim. Like, it looks like it's denim. I'm pretty sure denim, or is it just like leather material made to look like denim? Because that looks fucking insane, regardless. Um, take a peek at the capsule above. The prices range from 150 euros to 5,550 euros for the Givenchy collection, which is available now in store on the Givenchy website. So let's put this on big screen so we can see the entire thing. You've got these denim shark boots, number one, and a good little peek there at the varsity jacket. It looks like a denim mini skirt maybe next slide you've got an oversized polo here with the bistro and Givenchy logo which I think will do numbers the the polo has like an elongated back here I love the look of that it's giving Jersey Shore in slight bits but I do like it this choker thing with the ball is pretty decent too hopefully that gets sold as well I like that I, look, I like the look of that as also there's work gloves which everybody seems to be doing nowadays everyone's trying to LARP and trying to cosplay as work as a working man or as a working individual in general I think there's something quite emasculating about sitting down like I do on a laptop and working from home and tapping a little flipping you know soft uh non hard working hands on the keyboard and then crying and complaining that you don't have enough almond milk to put in your coffee so you want to give yourself this idea that you're actually a hard working man but putting on working gloves and feeling like you're toiling in the fields or you're working on a construction site or you're cutting wood and shit it's like come on man you're picking up a two grand backpack with a five grand laptop you know to put on your back of your 200 pound polo shirt it's not that bad life isn't that bad but i like them those shoes that he put out they kind of look like astro turfs but like you know bulbous astro turfs in in a in, in a way i hate them i would never wear them myself but i have to be honest i like the fact that he does something fresh with the footwear i'm sure it's not all matthew williams i'm sure there's a footwear designer that probably works in-house at Givenchy that helps to design the shapes but i like that the shapes are very Givenchy. they're very recognizable in terms of what they look like the high arch how bulbous they are the roundness of it bloody blood the lines on it but you know and obviously it's not for me clearly but i just like how unique they look there's nothing there's nothing on the market right now that looks like these Givenchy sneakers and that for me is a success because for the most part everybody's out there just like you know making their own interpretation of a nike of a new balance and not really adding anything interesting to the conversation so when he's doing something new and fresh i'm gonna rate it um you got here a global peace sweatshirt that looks pretty cool i like that i'm not gonna lie that looks pretty cool I love, the, I love the addition of the Givenchy logo in the squares with the 
Bistro B in the two brackets. The only thing I don't like about the Bistro thing, I think it's not their fault, but that corny, terrible, lame, um, lacking in inspiration and source flipping meme page, mood board thing hidden. It feels like the logo is slightly dissimilar. So when I see B, I always sometimes think it's going to be that H thing. And I wonder if, I'm sure B Stray came beforehand because those guys have been in the industry and the scene for a while. I remember seeing them on Instagram ages ago before maybe the brand really blew up. But for some reason, Hidden and B Stray feel like they have the same logo. Sometimes when I see it, it kind of feels like I get those shudders. I'm like, oh my God, no way did they collaborate with Flippin' Givenchy. They got no source. So it's good to see that it's B Stray. And then you've got a nice little bag here also. That's given, that's given Y2K, which is kind of the flavor of the month at the moment. I feel like all that Y2K stuff is going to age terribly very soon, and it it kind of feels like, because it's nice to see some of the kids going vintage and buying a lot of the Y2K stuff on eBay or on Depop or going to thrift stores and buying them. But the ones who are buying re, kind of like ready-made new y2k type clothing they're gonna look very dated in a couple of years when the culture shifts again and it's a whole new different sort of aesthetic that people are going for um i like this varsity jacket i think bistro do decent varsity jackets anyway and i like the addition of all these patches all over it it looks flipping brilliant i'm not sure what any of this means in general in terms of the bumblebee and the looks like a women hanging around some sort of bottle thing the hand there i don't know what's going on but i like it regardless there's a headband oh no it's a hat actually isn't it it's a hat with ear flaps that go over it it's on leather it looks pretty sick i love the addition of that the styling is great the casting is awesome of course the patches extend onto this denim suit that looks brilliant the denim suit reminds me slightly of a suit that um, Matthew Williams did for a leaks a while ago that was very popular there's plenty of fakes of it at the moment and it was the one that I thought was made by maybe made by black memes and it was sort of like cut up into little it, I think if what was it made I think maybe it was like cut into it was like slit loads of slits and then loads of fraying that was kind of around all the legs and all the arms and stuff if you remember it if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about um and then there's a, I like this big massive oversized bag and tote which i'm always a bigger bear fan of the shoes i don't think are probably part of the collection i'm not really too sure maybe these are models own or maybe the Givenchy also i'm not too sure but i like the the size of that tote bag i also like the fact that the tote bag has this strap shoulder strap on the top which I'm always a big fan of to kind of sling um, across your body and carry all your flipping little bits and pieces, you know, Uniqlo socks and rolled up beanies and your chapstick and whatnot. But yeah, this lookbook and the styling of the lookbook is so good. This, this over-exaggerated Afro thing going on here with the Givenchy shades that I'm hoping that are part of the Beast Ray collaboration and it's hot pink with the black is super awesome. This uh, hoodie that is cut um, like a crop top is great. You got B Stray gloves here, work gloves again going on. Also, so that kind of um, that thing I thought that was a choker with the pearls is maybe just a bracelet that they put on the model as a neck piece, maybe as a styling thing. So it might not be an actual necklace. That might be cool. Uh, you got more work gloves here. They look pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan of these with a B on them and a the hat jumper you got these kind of satin looking well there's that fur i'm not too sure what those pants look like but they look cool the shoes remind me of the raf simmons moon boots from c years ago they got that kind of feel to them I'm not too sure if they're the same things but they look pretty decent i think she was she had the budget to make the both of them and then it got a hoodie here um that looks pretty sick that is got two hoods on it which is flipping amazing and you got them wearing the denim shark booty type things on as well so i love that hoodie that hoodie would look pretty sick actually walking around with a hoodie that says gone death with two hoods on it that looks pretty sick i like that i really really like that because i think it did the same thing with a pair of jeans right that i think the jeans had two um leg bits on it i think the, the back of it kind of stuck at the back or something along those kind of lines but yeah um, i love this man. i think it looks pretty cool pretty fresh it's very on point um, I think the quirky kind of off kilter nature of B Stroy sort of suits what Givenchy are doing. There's obviously synergy there with them probably being friends in the industry or knowing of each other for a while. There's obviously the Virgil connection there as well, and I love it anyway because again, it's a good, it's another good uh, point to raise in terms of you know Givenchy and Matthew Williams just understanding how to tap into youth culture and get what they kind of want and stuff right they've got a real handle on it that's something that you cannot deny when it comes to them let's see if we can see the collection yeah there it is i want to see how what the prices of this entire thing is 
New Arrivals Bistro in Givenchy. Ooh, it's a it's a bucket hat with a mask. Okay, that's what it is. That's a bucket hat. Interesting how you can just label stuff what you want, right? I would never under I would never think this would be a bucket hat. It kind of looks like a hat with ear flaps, not a bucket hat. But I guess you know, technically, there's some technicality around that could turn a bucket hat. But regardless, it's sold out. Nine hundred twenty dollars. And it's completely gone in all sizes. So bravo to B. Stray and Matthew Williams for absolutely pushing units out there. You got these 4G sunglasses, which I think, okay, these are sold out also, it looks like. Or they're, oh no, they're not out yet at the moment. Maybe they're sold out, I'm not too sure. But these look pretty awesome. What What's all colors? You can only, you only got silver and gray here. What's the other color? Okay, it comes in black and a Havana colorway. These look pretty cool also. Mirrored lenses, nice and big with the g's on the side of it you know the vibes they look pretty awesome i love everything about them also you've got the regular jeans and um, with the patchworks all over them you've got a hexagonal what is that you got a card oh wow a card case i love the look of that that looks pretty cool so doesn't it you've got an oversized t-shirt you've got the the hoodie okay see i like that they've done with the lookbook where they've kind of they've taken bits and pieces of the this is the opposite of what emily oberg was doing with sporty and rich was just you know, including a flipping overcoat that you're not going to sell in the look but just to make it look cool they're taking stuff they're actually selling like this hoodie and then cutting it into a crop top just to make it look cool for the lookbook i love that kind of sort of stuff so you can buy it obviously but then the actual crop top thing doesn't exist but if you want to you can take that and then cut it yourself if you want to so it's kind of giving you a styling tip for yourself if you want to edit it you got the gone dev t-shirt you got a double layered top here you got the b stray givenchy socks which i'm surprised are still in stock because these are probably the cheapest thing right low entry yeah there's only one size 39 to 42 in terms of buying them whatever color is it they come in they've got the citrus green you got black uh, no white okay no white in those ones but still i like the look of them and then if you continue down, I want to see, I want to see that hoodie, the double headed hoodie, if they have that in stock. Not yet. We've got Givenchy with Bistro with a plus sign. you got some shorts here for $990, which is wild. Uh, you've got a track top. you got the GP shirt, which I like, GP sweat, which I like. And the double hooded, over, okay, the double headed oversized hoodie is one thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars. What are those shoes, by the way? Those shoes look very good, isn't it? I love those boots. Those boots are right up my alley. Wow. I wonder what those boots are. But that oversized hoodie looks. That look is just brilliant, though, isn't it? Come on. I know some of you probably won't be a fan of it, but I love this. There's a classic hoodie with like a other hoodie on the side of it. Your arm, one arm is completely elongated off the side. I kind of would have liked maybe just having two hoods and another and another head, another kind of hole here to pop your head through. So you've got the two hoods sitting on either side of your shoulder. But I do like this kind of weird off kilter sort of melted effect you got going on with the other sleeve being a little bit elongated and long. That looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie also, but I love that boot. Did it show you what other people's wearing? That doesn't show you. But I'd love to know what that boot is. I don't think it's part of the collection, actually. I think it's just a random thing that they're in there. Because there's no more then left. But yeah, it looks like it's all being sold well. Some of it is still coming soon. But it's cool to see a small kind of upstart brand in Bistro be able to collaborate with the house actually eventually. And this is the thing why it's important to have, you know, people um, from from very from kind of various from varied backgrounds people from non-traditional backgrounds sorry taking up jobs in fashion because it leads to far more interesting collaborations and maybe approaches to presenting clothes on that level because if you were to get somebody that had a conventional you would say fashion education would they want to collaborate with bistro probably not but when you get somebody that has come from screen printing t-shirts costume designing for lady gaga you know doing their own brand on the side working it up to be a fully fledged brand in itself that also shows that Paris Fashion Week and then you're giving the keys to a luxury house like Givenchy, they might approach it differently and include some, you know, some kind of um, not so well-known artists, not so well-known brands um, who are really affecting culture, who are really kind of sparking conversation, debate, styles, inspiration, all that kind of good stuff. And then now might go on to inspire a whole generation of kids coming up that might see this sort of stuff. It's pretty cool. And it kind of offers a, a fresh kind 
kind of you know outlook on these sort of things so hopefully it becomes successful and it continues on and they continue doing more and more as the years progress because it'll be cool to see them continue that relationship man it's a really cool way in a roundabout way to also honor Virgil's legacy because he would be I'd imagine super proud to see Bistro working with Givenchy on that level man because he's been championing and talking about those guys for a while moving on talking about more jeans actually we have this collaboration courtesy of undercover and levi's right john takashi's undercover and levi's have got a collaboration and it's pretty nice i'm not gonna lie for the most part you've been hearing a lot of stuff concerning denim tears and levi's that's been kind of dominating i feel like the the space in terms of gene output there's no one else out there really kind of doing genes to his level i think the last time somebody was getting their genes jacked and kind of sucked on this much was maybe capital back in the day but it feels like nowadays if you don't have those um reef denim tier jeans and you're nobody right I'm, I'm sure some girls now are seeing those denim tier jeans and probably might not give you cooch if you don't have them on so clearly there's an appeal to them but it's nice to see another offering of jeans that might kind of change and mix things up and to me this kind of gives me um who's that guy greg lauren this kind of gives me greg lauren in vibes in terms of the you know in terms of the mix of the denim and some of the down material and other materials used it really feels fresh i love the outlook on it um first of all the phrase of we make noise not teeth not clothes i've always detest um i think it's a bit corny a bit lame but you know japanese brands love to put a flipping phrase an english word on their clothes it makes them feel edgy it makes them feel cool i've never really got it but you know it is what it is but the wash of the actual gene is absolutely incredible i love this kind of acid wash you could call it acid but i don't think it is you could call it over i don't think it is either but whatever it may be it does look really really awesome i'm not too sure what the deal was with the kind of um it feels like they've kind of patched in or colored the model's hair and given them little you know they've covered him in some sort of gunk some sort of yellow or silver paint paint or spray I'm not sure if it's meant to mimic them working on a construction yard again is that a lot of kind of weird faux sort of um streetwear cosplaying as work as workwear and make me feel like they're actually working i'm not too sure but there's some sort of paint thing going on in the back of the model's head there and then you've got the same kind of thing going on with the model here in the front. You've got this. Oh, look, oh, sorry, that's her name. No, sorry, my bad. I'm so blind. It's the U with the line at the bottom there. Pretty decent logo. But then you've got some paint here around their face. So I'm not really too sure what's going on there. But the jeans themselves look pretty cool. And it's kind of essentially re what do you what would you call it um reconstructed wear so it's denim that's also been kind of stitched onto pieces of cotton you've got some jeans here where the front of the jean is a traditional denim jean and you've got the back of it looking a little bit like a track pant and the denim jacket basically turning into a elongated trench coat type thing which i think looks pretty cool and obviously the th first thing that comes to mind when you see this is balenciaga because they've done a similar type of thing before in their collections with trench and parkers had like a denim i think like had like a classic m65 and then stitched like a camo parker on the back of it to make it longer and stuff so this is stuff that's been done before undercover's also done stuff like this before in their actual collection so it is no surprise but i do like how this looks you got this denim black jacket that's stitched onto um the back of a fishtail parker that looks amazing so you got the bottom of the fishtail parker in the back of it that's stitched onto the bottom of a denim a denim jacket that looks like a classic denim jacket that you'd find in a vintage shop it's got that sort of 80s kind of um shape to it where the shoulders kind of drop off to the side right they kind of drop over the kind of angle of the shoulder so you get that kind of big bulbous look on your arms which looks really really nice and the wash of course is flipping excellent and then you've got the same effect here um with what looks a little bit like a cable neck cardigan with some pockets that fit at the bottom of it which look pretty cool also and then the addition of these jeans with the cotton at the back of them i think these are going to be really popular person i think these are going to sell like hotcakes and this is my favorite especially from the side this profile looks amazing so you got this classic denim jacket with three different pieces on it it feels like you got like a classic denim jacket with a classic down jacket stitched onto the back and then you've got this cardigan effect so you've got basically three items in one 
it looks pretty pretty cool and then the model was also wearing a pair of jeans that look like they've been stitched onto um the front of a pair of track pants or sweatpants with the undercover logo also kind of stained and dyed and stuff i love this whole stuff i love the fact that for every reason you know um over dyeing and distressing and you know customizing prints is in nothing people not people are just happy with pristine screen prints or pristine stitches or pleaks everything has to be kind of chipped and sawed and edited and scratched around it looks good because everyone can kind of wear their clothes with pride and not feel like or no wear their clothes with confidence and not feel like they have to kind of leave them in con pristine condition all the time oh look at that look at that how interesting that is the back of the pants we actually inspect them a little bit closer and you look up to the guy's flipping pussy what you see is that the sweatpants are stitched onto the back of the denims aren't actually sweatpants they look like they're t-shirts or maybe they're t-shirts that have been reclaimed or stuff that's maybe was in the scrap pile that they've basically been able to stitch together and make bits of fabric and then stitch them on the back that looks really cool so maybe that means every single piece will be unique so i wonder if this is going to be actually limited I wonder if this is kind of a perp if this is kind of a an imagined a kind of a on purpose vintage type of thing. What's what's this got here? Rebel Rebel Gods, right? I thought that said raw dog. <laughs> that'd be awesome. You put raw dog on the front of your jeans. That'd pretty look pretty that'd pretty look sick, I'm not going to lie. Um and then you got another screenshot here with the blue with the same kind of jacket i'm assuming with the down at the back i'm assuming with the cable knit jumper underneath there it looks pretty nice this is really cool like, look at that that looks excellent i don't care what anyone says i'd wear the fuck out of that look that looks really really good obviously in the black is probably the best for me but that blue looks really really bizarre and this is the classic thing you see in most flipping art galleries everywhere in flipping London in some sort of white cube somewhere is some sort of video screening showing in these flipping cubed television this cube Sony television sets I wonder if Sony still make these things specifically for artists or are they kind of discontinued or for galleries in general or do they kind of just you know loan each other these TVs that they screen these flipping shorts on or somebody looking blinking scratching their eyelids or whatnot I wonder if that's a that's a thing but it looks pretty cool i'm a fan of all of it i love every single piece i'm not going to lie i think it looks all really interesting um i'm not too sure if each piece is going to be made um to what to order or something or if it's all limited edition because they're having to get old scraps of bits of material and then stitch them all together i love how kind of off kilter it all kind of looks the mix bit like even this because you could have probably if they wanted to they probably could have had just the, the the down jacket bit at the front instead of the cardigan but i like the mix of it of just kind of throwing it off a little bit by having the brown cable knit underneath a baby or kind of light blue jean color sort of denim jacket a classic one and having the back be the down jacket bit i think it looks pretty cool i'm not going to lie i like how that looks in general but let's read the article. I want to see what they say in terms of if this is like a one-off. So it's courtesy of um, Hypebeat. It says, following an announcement earlier this month, John Takashi is another cover and Levi's have now released a full collection and lookbook of the upcoming collection. Um, highlighted in the series is a spin of vintage Levi's jeans and trucker jackets um, in both indigo and black washes. The trucker jackets are found in a number of hybrid components and attachments, including a puffer paneling, um, cable knit bottom extensions, and military-style cargo pockets. Sorry, and indigo flaps. Colligate text of the undercover slogan We Make Noise Not Clothes is found printed throughout. For bottoms, rugged two tone jeans are split at the seams and featuring a French terry cloth fabric, raw hem, and double knee panels on the backside, ripstop cargo pant pockets, and a co branded red ink jug jacrons additional details include a rebel gods text across the front of the zipper shot in the studio in london the collection is styled by noah and angus york children of iconic radio head singer tom york oh awesome the undercover collection will be launching on november 11th with the exception of europe which was a collection would launch on the 25th of levi's channels where's undercover website okay so it should be out now let's see what the prices are saying i'm gonna I'm say probably 1k for the trucker denim jacket with a down thing i'm saying 1k like minimum 1k if it's anything more than that i'll be very very surprised let's see undercover john takashi here <laughs> you got it here let's click the banner let's see what they're saying here the levi's if it's 1k i'll be 
surprise okay it's all in yen so yeah i'm assuming 173 thousand yen is not going to be peanuts so let's just uh let's uh, google search this and see what people are saying about that price but 170 oof yeah 1k for the denim jacket down thing god damn so 1k and then what like under nine like about 900 for the jeans i'm assuming 100 thousand it's about 900 probably <clears throat> so you're looking at two grand is it two grand did i say two grand no you're looking at about yeah 1600 for the denim jacket and the denim pants that have been re uh re-engineered with um the fabric paneling and whatnot from other scrap t-shirts and shit looks pretty cool it might be a project to do for the weekend you know get a pair of old jeans and then try to stitch a bit of kind of cotton fabric on the back of them like this and try and make them yourself because that's a pretty i'd imagine it might be a bit of a sticky thing to do but it looks like a slightly easy thing to do get a pair of sweatpants and stitch them on the back of them they look pretty cool don't they I like the look of that and the t-shirt thing is all there it looks pretty sick with the print on it. it looks sick as well i'm not i'm not i'm not too mad at that in the slightest the pockets even don't really look like pockets that you'd see on the back of sweatpants i'm not sure if they're pockets that are taken from the front of a shirt or something but they look pretty cool i'm a fan of all of it i love it i love it love it love it but unfortunately the price is not calling my name <laughs> But anyway, moving on from that one, we have this pretty cool, interesting article courtesy of the business of fashion talking about the state of in influencer economy and how things are moving and changing. So there's a couple of slides here that I thought were of interest or one slide in particular, but I'll read the caption itself. This is courtesy of the business of fashion Instagram account. And it says things move fast on the internet in just the past few years. We've been, we've, uh, uh, there've been a number of changes in social media space and influencer economy built around it. For one, brands are betting on influencers with day jobs, working with creators like Sky Ting founder, Chrissy Jones, or James Whiteside, principal dancer at the American Ballet Theatre, as they look for a, a relatable ambassadors to reach engaged audiences. The line between average social media user and influencers increasingly blurred as non-influencers endorse products online. Wildly, people learn more about brands from other people people rather than brands own storytelling it's becoming even more important for brands to be on every platform and influencers to have their own platforms that most brands is a quote here most brands have probably not fully recognized the understood the impact of all their customers having a platform this is existential to the brands if they can't figure this out they won't be able to compete in a decade says james nord the founder of influencer marketing company for so this is something that I've kind of noticed and kind of known for a while because my idea of being an influencer or my idea of being somebody of some merit that people would want to listen to or want to seek advice from is somebody I feel like is without um is kind of a without compromise or somebody that isn't beholden to the brands that are paying them and i think a really good example of that is somebody that i've kind of always looked up to is hiroshi fujiwara and in general how he kind of approached being an influencer or a tastemaker when he used to have a column in all these magazines like you know asayan that i have that used to write a column where he basically recommend records to buy um, books to read movies to watch jackets to buy holidays to go on it was always from the point of view of being the consumer consumer right somebody that was willing and happy to spend money um out of their own pocket to go to these far-flung places collect these awesome things connect with cool people around the world just because they like doing those things and not because you know Ramoa was sending them to go and test the flipping you know carry-on luggage in the depths of flipping morocco no they were going there because they heard that this place in morocco had the best whatever dish and they also stumbled upon somebody that sold the best carpets whatever it may be it kind of comes from a real place and i felt like especially nowadays maybe because it's so easy to buy followers and to basically fake it till you make it and look like you're the real deal in terms of your reach and no, in terms of the followers that you have in terms of how you basically tag things online you can make it appear like you're a real kind of highfalutin um, very well regarded and well connected influencer who's been sponsored by the likes of Adidas and Nike and Givenchy and Balenciaga when you could just when you're just buying yourself right but the thing that's not really influencing is that you're usually buying things that you'd want people to get give you for free 
they're usually also things that are already trendy and already kind of within the popular kind of zeitgeist and culture you're not really revealing or providing people with new or fresh things that they can kind of you know um, consume um, read or just experience it's all things that are already out there and I feel like that level of com influencing is gone because that person, he or she, is most likely the person that's thirsting for free tickets to a fashion show, free tickets to a premiere, an invite to a party. They want to get the free clothes. They want the free merch. They want to look for the runway, but they're not going to support an up and coming, you know, designer. They're not going to go watch um you know a small production play they're not going to go and test out a new restaurant that opened out and writing about it on their instagram account they're only doing the things that people are coming to like it's kind of like inbound influencing you're just waiting for brands to reach out to you because you've got a, you've got an audience and you've got some followers so that they can tap into them but you're not actually influencing in the conventional way that i would say influencing is which is the idea of like you know you're a very fashionable girl but then you might have a particular hairband a particular brush that you use a particular brand of overcoat that you like that's not very popular and then suddenly you highlight it on your instagram and then bang it sells out in seconds that for me is real influencing influencing isn't getting you know the flipping balenciaga and, and gucci collaboration early wearing it and then hoping people buy it because you wore it that's already going to sell out because of the brands that are involved actual real influencing is going to a vintage shop and finding or no going to i don't know going to zara or something like that right and finding a really cool parka that a lot of people are overlooking that's maybe only 40 dollars and then kind of putting it on mixing it up with all the designer clothes you wear and then suddenly that becomes a big deal and i feel like brands are realizing now that they're not really getting a lot of return on their investment especially now in a, in a sort of like downward economy you want to make sure if you're paying an influencer the big bucks that you're seeing on a return investment which is why for the most part the influencers that can sell items the ones that who you know can legitimately um shift units are the ones that are really you know the top 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 of the tier i think the rest of them for the most part are just kind of image things they're people that can maybe amass a following they can maybe get a lot of engagement on their posts but will people actually go and spend money on the things that they recommend probably not because they know it's not real it's stuff that they're being endorsed by it's stuff that people they probably got a deal with them they maybe got an affiliate link it's never something that's coming from a real place and that's a real shame i feel like them hopefully we'll see now a lot more influencers being a lot more resilient resourceful and basically buying their own things like that they like and then kind of showing it off to people i feel like that's kind of the basic premise of being an influencer but for the like i said longest time they were just all waiting to get kind of free products given to them but i feel like now in a sort of downward economy with a recession going on at the moment there's probably not a lot of money going out there to influencers i would imagine maybe i'm it's opposite who knows but i would imagine for the most part everyone's kind of feeling the pinch after the case then if you're an influencer you probably should put put your hand in your own pocket and buy stuff and support things that you actually like promote that on your platform and then that will take you to the next level level of stratosphere in terms of being an influencer where you're legitimately affecting things in real life and in culture you're not just like kind of putting up looks on flipping social media and hoping that you get a certain amount of likes that's probably the next frontier going forward so it's cool to see some of the things that i've been thinking about be echoed in this report courtesy of business of fashion so of course if you want you can check it out yourself um you know the link is over here on the page you know where it is you can find it you know what bff bf bof looks like and if you don't I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot help you. Going forward, going forward, going forward. I would actually like to know, this is courtesy of RA, where they're featuring this um, new Pioneer two-channel controller. And it's interesting because I think I was talking to somebody else about it the other day. And they were kind of bemoaning, you know, the fact that some places or some clubs are still hiring the same cis, straight, you know, white male DJ. And it's so hard for everyone else to make it, all this stuff. It needs to be more representation and blah, 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 which are all valid points. But for the most part, it doesn't matter if you're a white male or you're a black girl or you're an Asian guy. 
making it as a DJ is just incredibly difficult and there is no kind of straight path to bedroom to stardom it doesn't exist if someone told you exist they're absolutely lying everyone's got a different path everyone's got a different route everyone's got a different process a different journey it just is what it is and sometimes it doesn't work out you can do as much as you want you can look as hot as you want you can dance as much as you like have some funky hairstyle and maybe it just doesn't work out and you're just going to be relegated to doing pirate live streams like i do right so it's not always like that but I would be interested to know, especially now with the advent of these controllers being so prevalent in the scene, there's so many options now, the quality is improved, you've got brands like Pioneer investing big bucks in these sort of like bedroom-esque kind of house party get-ups, set-ups sorry, where you can essentially plug and play and get mixing straight away. I wonder if there's ever going to be a story put together by these brands where they're able to actually trace when somebody purchased this and then went from playing on one of these little kind of two channel basic controller things and then going suddenly to stardom becoming somebody that's headlining a festival playing at all the big clubs touring working with pop artists or working whatever genre they didn't want to working i wonder if that's actually a thing i know for some djs they're sometimes ashamed and they're not proud to say they even started using midi players sometimes they'll go to a set it's something you see people going to a party or playing at a rave and being embarrassed to pull out the midi player because you know it maybe looks like an average or beginner type product but if it's something you're comfortable on there's a tool that you can use and why not who gives a crap but i wonder if they're i wonder if there isn't dj could be honest enough to say no i started playing on this first and then I progressed into CDJs later on when I had more money or when I could maybe afford to rent them or to use them in the studio. But this is where I started. And then two years, one year, four years, six years down the line, here I am suddenly, you know, recording a BBC One Extra mix or, um, you know, headlining Flipping Burning Man or something. I wonder if that will happen because I think that would be a pretty sick way to sell a lot of controllers. Because, you know, if there's one thing that DJs are obsessed with, it's flipping gear. There's always somebody asking about headphones you're using, cables and all this sort of stuff because everyone feels like they just need one more cheat code in order to kind of break through and get the thing that they want to get in terms of getting more bookings, which never really affects anything for the most part, right? Maybe concentrating on playing and actually having a good ear for music and sequencing your mixes properly might help, but gear really doesn't help. But I really think if they were able, Pioneer, to some how trace the journey of somebody going from playing on one of these shitty two channel controllers all the way until headlining a big festival they would sell hundreds and sometimes hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of controllers when they could say hey this guy here that you know and love this guy that was just a boiler room smashing shit up again like imagine if fred again said yeah i started off playing and djing and making my tunes using the flipping cue pads on this flipping controller and do my mixes on these flipping jog wheels and shit plug into my laptop like that would be incredible they'd sell units like you can maybe make a branded fred again one or something i think i look pretty is sick going forward but i don't think djs would be honest enough to say i started this anyway so they kind of just have to sell these to bedroom djs or people just having fun at home mixing and falling around which there probably might be a lot of people doing that because clubs are flipping empty nowadays so there's probably loads of people at home with headphones in just jamming you know um playing songs that they like fucking around with mixes and stuff and testing out ideas or copying a mix or a transition they might have heard from a dj you know play somewhere else i think that probably happens a lot more than we probably realize or than i probably realize anyway to begin with but yeah big up pioneer on another new pioneer two channel mixer this one's called the ddj flx v4 no xl flx4 sorry so yeah check it out if you want check it out if you want and then the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly was this courtesy of, oh, where is it? There we go. Courtesy of RA, another bit of news that is good on one side, but when you see the nominees, it's a little bit strange and I feel like it's completely unnecessary because it just is. Anyway, this is the first thing. So you've got this article courtesy of RA. It says the following. Mobo Awards introduces first ever dance music category, which is absolutely incredible and something I feel like should have happened a long time ago. If you don't know what the Mobo Awards are, it's essentially the UK version of the BET Awards. Um, so essentially kind of, you know, highlighting and recognizing people from the black community who are making incredible music and whatnot. 
and you know the fact that we don't have a dance music category at that award ceremony is absolutely a liberty but it's good to see it being introduced now but the nominees is the interesting part of it it says the mobile awards introducing the first ever damn hey fever it says the Mobile Awards introducing a Best Electronic Dance Act category for the first time since... For the first time, sorry. The Mobile Awards introducing a Best Dance Electronic Music Dance category. <clears throat> the Mobile Awards is introducing a Best Dance... The Mobile Awards is introducing a Best Electronic Dance Act category for the first time in 2022. The nominees for the new award, which is sponsored by Mixmag, are as follows. Ants, who I always love, Eliza Rose, FK Twigs, Jax Jones, Near Archives, and Shirelle. The MOBAs have previously been criticized for its lack of dance music representation. In April, Near Archives penned an open letter saying it had been massively regressive for the black community. And then she got nominated, which is hilarious. She wrote, How can we expect young black people to see themselves in music if our own organizations and award ceremonies won't even celebrate the diverse range of talent that boldly exists in this country? I wonder if I made an, oh, if I penned an open letter to Bergheim talking about the lack of black DJs. You're going to give me a set, <laughs> give me a slot to play. That'd be awesome. Jaguar and Helen and Star expressed their similar concerns in a mixed mag article in 2020. Unlucky, saying the decisions to ignore massive parts of global history have contributed to the erasure of dance music's black history heritage. Okay. Posting on Instagram earlier today, November 11th, Black Music, sorry, Black Electronic Music Association, BEMA, bloody hell, mate, um, announced he has been working tirelessly to reinstate the Dance Music Award at the MOBA. So I wonder why they took it down in the first place. Like, dance music, especially within the black community, especially within black culture, especially in the UK, is very prevalent, right? From back in the day, from, I don't know, you know, back in the day, even a few years ago, especially during the uh, during the peak years of funky, the amount of people who could have been acknowledged, man, the, the peak year of flipping garage music of... Oh, so many things uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real shame the 25th anniversary of the mobile wars will take place on london's webby arena and be live streamed on youtube and highlights will subsequently be aired on bbc one i don't know when it's going to happen but the thing that's annoying for me about this sort of thing is it kind of feels a bit performative or it kind of feels like they're obviously trying to tick all the you know representation boxes because they're just for the most part with the exception of jack jones again i'm not sure how he identifies but they're all girls every single one of them and it's a bit of a liberty because it's like there's plenty of other boy djs who or male djs sorry who are underrepresented who are also black who play amazingly and who have influenced culture in a really amazing way especially this year who should be recognized who aren't on that list and i just feel like in an effort to maybe highlight the female djs or the women djs who clearly don't get highlighted a lot especially in dance music it's definitely something that is an issue you've somehow also slighted like the black guys who are doing bits and bobs in the industry as well it's a very strange thing and then to have the person who coined the open letter have a nomination it's also like is that nomination based on merit or is it based on the fact that they were moaning about it i don't know it just feels a bit weird and it kind of takes away from how amazing this category is and the things that it could do in the future especially it being kind of sponsored by mix mag there also could be like a funnel that could go from like mix mag into stuff like mobos in terms of being recognized you can see stuff like you know artists kind of you know um what's that word called a and r in terms of you know is it a and r whatever that thing is in terms of cultivating an artist in terms of helping them kind of you know navigate the industry uh whatever it may be that could be a good way to kind of make things work and mix Mag has been sometimes accused of being a little bit whitewashed so this is a good way to obviously repair their reputation in that regards but i just feel like there could be a lot more diversity in the nominees for me because like i see i see five i would say women and then i see one dude which is crazy when you consider the contribution that black community has played overall in dance music this year alone. It's pretty nuts to have that be your representation. But again, it's maybe the first time and maybe we should maybe cut them some slack or I should cut them some slack, but it's a bit disappointing. I'm not going to lie. In an effort to appease one set of people, one group of people, you've then kind of completely ignored another group of people and you just thrown this one guy in there just as like charity. I feel like it's a little bit annoying in my opinion 
opinion. Uh, you know, and, and the person that moaned about it read the article is there. Like, you know, come on, man. It's like biggest love. You knew you were going to be there. You, you you complained about it. It makes complete sense why you were going to be on there, isn't it? But again, um, you know, awards are maybe not the most important thing, but sometimes if you are toiling away in the creative, you know, in the in the in the arts you know that you don't get many you don't get much recognition for the things that you do behind the scenes or maybe in front of the cameras um not everyone makes the big bucks not everyone gets a tour not everyone gets to get super famous so sometimes awards can be a great way to acknowledge people even sometimes just nominations it doesn't need to be flipping give winning the award just being nominated sometimes can go a long way to kind of appease people and make them feel like they are seen and that their work matters and all that good stuff so i get it but i just would like to see more more representation when it comes to the guy side of things because we also exist we also don't get recognized we also at the bottom of the totem pole we're fighting there with you guys and we just like to see us being represented a lot more on here because this is completely out of order i feel like having all of these ladies and then having just one dude here feels a little bit insulting but hey at least we're starting somewhere at least we are starting somewhere but it but um what's it got? Oh, it's 118 already. Bloody hell, man. Bloody hell. So I think I think I think I'm going to leave it there for now. That has been the Exxon Zinga Show episode number six one eight. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual. If you want to see more of me, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, of course you're gonna hear my tune of the day. If you're watching via YouTube, you won't hear any tune or just fade to mother black and i'll see you guys again very soon take care be safe